everyone and we are live welcome to uh wealth wednesday this week we're going to be talking all about charitable giving this week um now uh just kind of some housekeeping things at, at the start we've been having a lot of issues technology wise you guys have probably noticed over the past few weeks um so let us know if 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 everything's working properly if i'm coming through clear uh and concise uh, but we're going to be switching over next week to a, a different streaming service. Hopefully that just clears everything up and fixes this. So I'm going to go ahead right off the bat, share my screen. Again, if you guys can let me know uh, if you guys can hear me, um, that would be fantastic. Just want to make sure everything is, is – oh, okay, awesome. Thanks, Connie. Awesome. So we're going to be talking here all about charitable giving and uh, and basically how to maximize the impact of giving to charity and and both for you and your retirement, but also for the charity. OK, uh, when we maximize the the impact, the gift that you have that you give to these charities, we're helping both you and that charity. And so uh, really today we're going to be talking about just how to get the most out of giving and in the Midwest, a lot of the clients that, that we deal with, giving is a high priority, okay? The Midwest, uh, statistically, uh, is one of the biggest givers, uh, essentially, in the nation. And so uh, it, it often comes up in conversations that we have, and so I thought it's a great topic here for Wealth Wednesday. And I, I included this in the uh, kind of the post leading into, um, into this Wealth Wednesday, and I think it's it's just a great quote. You know, it's no one has ever become poor by giving. And, uh, you know, it really comes down to giving, whether it's money, whether it's you volunteering your time, you, you know, it adds something more to, uh, to retirement. Sure, you're giving away the gift of money, but uh, you're getting back something a lot more wholesome. And so I think, again, in, in, uh, as we go through retirement, kind of remembering that uh, you know, a lot of us have got have done well through hard work, but uh, we're also very lucky to be where we are. And so a way to give back to those that's less fortunate um, can, can be a great way to kind of, again, add a, a, a softer side to your retirement. And we're going to be talking a lot uh, about a couple different, uh, I'm going to be, I guess, giving examples um, about giving to a certain charity. And it's important to remember that giving is a, a very personal thing. And so some of the examples, don't, don't hold me to those examples. I want you guys to give to whatever causes um, really hit home with you the most. That's going to be different for everybody, okay? So kind of questions to ask yourself and really ask yourself at the beginning of retirement are here on the screen. What, what really are your goals in retirement, okay? And I, again, we talk a lot about goals in retirement from an income standpoint and whatnot, but um, Usually when we're building out retirement plans, uh, oftentimes we build out a solid enough plan that saves on taxes, that maximizes Social Security, that a lot of times we show that uh, that client is going to pass away with money still left. And so a question we ask everyone when they come into our office is, if you died, let's say, with a, a million dollars left at the end of, the, of your retirement, would that feel like a success or would that feel like a failure? Now, some people want to basically essentially bounce their last check, <laughs> if they will, and uh, and others want to have a sum of money there as a uh, you know a, a, a safety measure in case they need long term care or something like that, or they want to pass money on to their heirs. And so, thinking to your retirement, how do you view having money left at the end? Okay, does it feel like you should have been using that on yourself, or you could have been giving as you go through retirement, or is that something where you want to leave money to your heirs? Uh, can't read the slide. Okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me know, Bruce. I'm not exactly sure uh, why that is. I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen and then try to share it again. Hopefully that that fixes it. Um, I seem to be having an issue with uh, with a connection here, unfortunately. Um, Huh. Like I said, this is part of the, uh, the the technical issues we've been having, and hopefully it's going to be fixed going forward. So I'm not exactly sure if we can uh, if I can exactly remedy the situation. 
uh, as we go through. I'm going to share the slide deck, though, uh, in the comments afterwards, and, uh, and hopefully you guys can follow along there. Uh, I, I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, basically what you bef before going into retirement or as you start in the beginning of retirement, you have to know your goals. Okay. And number two, if you do have money left at the end, what, what is your giving strategy look like? Is that something that, um, you want to keep in house that you want to pass on to your heirs, or is that something that you want to pass on to causes that you care about? Yeah, there's a great Warren Buffett quote that you want to leave your children with enough money so they can do anything they want. They can uh, pursue any passion they want, but you don't want to leave them with enough that they don't have to do anything. And so once again, a lot of our clients um, have a, a well-built enough plan that they might have, let's say, $2 million at the end of their retirement. Well, if you only have one kid or potentially two kids, do you want to split that up and give essentially a million each to those two kids? Or do you want to split it up and give some causes you care about. Again, no answer is right or wrong. It really depends on your situation and what you want. Okay. Again, personal finance is about 90% personal, and only 10% finance. Okay. And then number three, how do you want to make that impact? If you're going to give to charity, what charities or causes do you care most about? And I would say in recent years, charity, charitable giving has, um, has really transformed. Okay. And um, there have been some new, uh, pretty cool, in my opinion, um, different charities that have come out in the past. Uh, one of those, just to note, would be so, uh, an organization called X Prize. Okay, and so uh, this uh, this X Prize organization, you contribute money to a certain cause. Okay, so and it's it's typically a, a giant cause. So it's like, for instance, um, there is a prize, if you will, for um, for creating, um, for creating uh, like a, a, a renewable, um, uh, a, a renewable meat source, for instance. So rather than us having to raise a bunch of cows, we can essentially in a lab create um, create meat from from proteins from um, basically scratch. Okay, and it's something we can't do now that you can essentially contribute to. And all of that money goes to this prize. And essentially how this works is you might have uh, 10 different teams that are vying for this prize, which might be like $150 million. So these teams are putting up their money. And the only person that gets money from this prize is the person that solves the issue. Okay. So there are incredible ways now that you can make impacts and give to charity that we really didn't have access to before. So it doesn't always have to come in the in, in giving to a, a, a charity that has huge overhead, that's trying to fix a common problem that we hear about every day. There are some kind of on the frontier uh, charities, if you will, that, that you can contribute to. And again, uh, it's just transformed quite a bit in the past two decades. But let's get kind of further into the meat and potatoes. And it's really, when we lay out somebody's retirement picture uh, and we see this income layout throughout the years, Oftentimes we see something that looks like this, okay? And it shows basically at the end of their retirement, they have a surplus of $775,000 or $1.5 million or $300,000, okay? And um, when you see a number like this, you have to ask yourself two questions, okay? One, am I meeting all the needs that I want in retirement? Could I spend that money on myself better, okay? Should, could I raise my income? If the answer is no, if you, you have enough income and you planned out correctly, then it's, okay, am I fine leaving that to someone at the end of my life? Or is there some kind of periodic strategy, giving strategy that we can implement throughout time? So rather than having, again, 775,000 at the end of your life, maybe it turns into gifting uh, $15,000 a year to a charity that you care about. And once we build that into your plan, we can see this number change. Uh, giving $15,000 a year, maybe that number looks more like you only have 300,000 left over. And so again, there's a lot of ways to, to quote unquote, skin the cat when, when uh, we're talking about giving. It really just depends on what, what you wanna do and how you wanna, you wanna form this plan for yourself. And just some things to consider when giving. Uh, charity isn't just about money, okay? Uh, when in retirement, there's a lot of, uh, one of the things that you have a lot more of is time, okay? And it's just important to remember that volunteering can maybe solve that giving um, 
need or want in a different way. So it doesn't always have to be money. Uh, it can also be giving things like highly appreciated stock, which we'll talk about. And sometimes you can get more impact from giving things like that. I will say, uh, broadly speaking, you do gain more benefit with gifting while you're alive rather than when you pass away. Okay. And uh, so, again, something we're going to talk about is giving in tax specific years. So for instance, if you have a Roth conversion strategy that is raising your income significantly, well, giving can kind of sometimes offset and you get a deduction to basically offset some of that uh, high tax that you're paying on those large Roth conversions. Uh, another thing to note is not all charities are created equal. We're going to talk through a couple different sources that you can go to to kind of check into a charity. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of charities that have huge overhead where let's say you give a dollar to that charity. It might might end up only uh, being that 50 cents goes to the actual cause that you care about. Well, are you do you know that uh, and are you all right with that? Other times, uh, you know, costs can be go to admin, can go to the CEO of the charity, especially some big charities. It can go to fundraising. And so just knowing what you're giving to is, uh, again, a huge or an important way to make sure that your impact is uh, your mo your money is impacted the way that you want it to. And then there are giving limits. So in general, um, giving cash, you can only give 60% of adjusted gross income in a given year. Um, gifting things like uh, a property, I believe that's only 30% um, that you can give of AGI. And so um, just know that there is a max that you can give in a year. However, you can carry forward uh, gifts, gift deductions into following years if you go over that. So um, this is kind of the, the what I was talking about where you can essentially check charities. So let's say you're giving to an organization. Well, how much of my money is actually going to the cause that I care about? And there's a few essentially charity watchdog sites that I have listed here. Go ahead and screenshot this. Um, you know, if, if, if you want to double check your charity, uh, and unfortunately, we see that a lot of charities, uh, I guess, charity, charitable giving in general, uh, unfortunately, can lead to scams because oftentimes people are giving and they're giving for wholesome reasons. And unfortunately, there are people that take advantage of that. And oftentimes when we give, we don't exactly double check into the charities as often. Um, you know, we hear, uh, we see an ad for a, a charity or we, we go to an event and uh, uh, we don't always know kind of where that money is going. So again, I would just urge everyone to double check into the charities that you're giving to. Make sure that that money is going to, to the, what you want it to. And it's not going to, let's say, a CEO that's taking, you know, half a million dollars a year to run this charity. Okay. Uh, but let's get into kind of the the, the finer numbers, four strategies that uh, you can use to get the most out of your charitable giving. And like I alluded to earlier, combining these strategies with other planning strategies like Roth conversions can be incredibly impactful. So here we have a, um, basically what we do for every one of our clients, we analyze their tax situation at the beginning of retirement and then throughout retirement to see how it changes. So this is what we call a forward looking tax plan. And you can see in this scenario that this specific person was taking a low enough income that they didn't necessarily have a huge income name, but they had a considerable amount of assets. Well, that seems like a great situation to be in, but unfortunately can really bite you in the, bite you in the butt um, further down the line because of different hurdles that you have to overcome in retirement. One of those being RMDs. And so in the green here, we see RMDs and we see that the forced distributions that they're uh, forced to take from uh, their retirement assets creates a situation where they're, uh, it's forcing them to take income they don't need and it's forcing them into higher brackets. So you can see kind of when they begin retirement, they're in this 12% bracket here, okay? And then once RMDs start, it pushes them all the way into the 24% bracket, okay? And so this is a situation that it's important for everyone to see at the beginning of retirement to know what kind of tax hurdles we'll see later into retirement and how you typically remedy this situation is with Roth conversions, especially right now with uh, the low tax brackets that we are in because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And so in this scenario here, we see, you know, massive Roth conversions that we had this particular client do. 
Okay, over $100,000 of Roth conversions. Okay, and these Roth conversions were maxing out the 22% bracket. Okay, so ultimately the majority of this Roth conversion they were paying 22% on to essentially try to avoid uh, paying 24% later in retirement. Well, this creates a situation where ideally we might even want to convert more than this as we see there, um, you know, they're still bumping into that tax bracket, the, the 22 later into retirement that uh, again could be a problem with social security that we might even want to do more than this or maybe we want to convert up to this bracket but we don't necessarily want to pay taxes on 22 percent or pay 22 percent taxes on this full conversion well one thing that they can do once again if we know that they're going to have extra money at the end of their life because they were great savers and they're uh, relatively frugal well if they're charity minded wouldn't it make sense to, to, uh, to contribute to charity and contribute a, a substantial amount? Because they contribute a substantial amount, they're going to essentially get a deduction for doing so. Okay, and that deduction is going to lower um, lower this, this tax liability. Okay, so if they have a $50,000 charitable deduction, let's say, well, it's going to basically either allow them to convert $50,000 more or it's going to take $50,000 out of that 22% bracket. Okay, and so gifting at the right time can be extremely important. And this gifting changed in uh, with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of, uh, uh, I think I have tax law changes in 2020. It was actually 2018. Um, but uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2018. And before the standard deduction was low enough, okay, we see in this old law here that the standard deduction for a single person was 6,500, 13,000 for a married couple. Well, the new law basically just about doubled that. Okay. And so now because the standard deduction is so much higher, uh, most people don't end up itemizing their deductions anymore because it's hard for many to get above that, uh, that standard deduction. Okay. And so uh, I believe something like 90% of people just take the standard deduction now. And so if you're giving to charity and you're giving a small amount in a given year, and you're not deducting it, you're really not getting any benefit from charity, any tax benefit, because you're not able to itemize it. You just take the standard deduction. So let's say you give $10,000 to charity. Well, if that's really your, your major deduction and, and you don't have enough itemized, you're not getting any tax benefit for that $10,000. So is there anything that we can do uh, to basically improve on uh, and sidestep this itemization? And there is. And it's something called batch and giving, okay? So in this example here, let's say, um, and again, this is a little old, I think it's 2019, but I think it's a great graphic that let's say that you have someone that's giving $3,000 a year, a year, okay? So, and they're a single uh, taxpayer, so the standard deduction is 12,200. And so they're giving $3,000 a year, they don't have enough, uh, enough uh, other deductions, and so that gifting is basically doesn't provide them any value uh, tax wise. Okay. Well, something that they can do rather than giving $3,000 each year is save up for five years, put it in an account that, you know, that $3,000 can grow through those five years. And then in one year gift $15,000. Okay. The reason you would do that is because that $15,000 all of a sudden now overcomes that standard deduction. Okay. And so now in that given year, it makes sense to itemize. And again, depending on your situation, it might make sense to gift it all in year one and then not gift for the next couple of years. Or it might make sense that you have to save up that money and then gift in that final year. Okay. But this batch and giving strategy, again, can just get you a little bit more benefit from those gifts tax wise. Um, $300, per, uh, I guess the exclusion is something that they pass with the CARES Act. Uh, I don't believe it has a sunset on it right now. They might have changed that with some previous bills, but when I first read the CARES Act, they didn't have sunset on this. Uh, but basically you have a $300 per person above the line deduction in 2020 and then 2021. So uh, basically giving $300 allows you to basically sidestep this itemization and write off $300. So again, if you're giving, make sure you know about that and your, uh, your accountant is basically adding that uh, to your tax return so you can get that deduction. Uh, gifting strategy number two, gifting always do doesn't always have to come in terms of cash. Okay, let's say that you have a taxable account. 
Okay. And in this taxable account, you've, you have some investments that you've held for a while and they're what we call highly appreciated. And typically highly appreciated means that they have, um, you know, I would say more than $10,000, $20,000 of uh, appreciation. Okay. And so um, donating stock can be a good, donating these highly appreciated assets can be a great way, again, to get more benefit from your gift. Okay, so let's say that uh, in this first example, we have a, uh, we're gonna go through them actually, in both examples, we have $20,000 that we originally invested. Let's say we invested that five years ago. We invested in some great stocks. That $20,000 grew into $50,000. So right now we have a $30,000 tax liability, okay? And so if we sell that, we have to pay taxes dollars or if we implement it into our gifting strategy, we can gift that stock to a charity. So if we give that stock to the charity, we're not selling the stock. So we don't ever incur that gain. So you notice here in this third line, we have zero dollars in taxes that we owe. So the total contribution to the charity is fifty thousand dollars. Okay, but and the oh, whoop. And the income savings by donating that appreciated uh, that appreciated money um, it is six thousand dollars. Okay, and so over here we have donating cash. So this is assuming again we have that same twenty thousand dollars. It's grown to fifty thousand dollars, but we're going to sell that, and then we're going to gift it to the charity. Okay, and so in this example, um, and again the the income tax savings is based on the deduction that you would get. Okay, uh, and so um, in this scenario, we, we're because we're selling and then donating the cash, we ha we have to pay taxes on that thirty thousand dollars of gain. Okay, so taxes at fifteen percent would be seventy five sixty, and so the money that ends up going to the charity is only forty two thousand. And again, because we're only gifting forty two thousand, then the income tax savings with the deduction ends up being smaller too. So notice once again here, by gifting the right way, you can not only gift more to the charity, in this case, almost uh, $8,000 more to the charity, but you also get an extra $1,000 deduction because you're gifting more. So it's in, in the donating cash scenario, you're kind of gifting to the charity and then you're also gifting to Uncle Sam. I would rather you gift to, uh, to the charity that appreciated stock, sidestep Uncle Sam and get, get a little bit higher tax deduction for doing so. Okay. Uh, another way to gift investments is with something called a donor advised fund. So this would be something, again, you have highly appreciated stock. You just want to essentially distribute it in a different way, or maybe you don't want to distribute it all in one year. So same exact way you would gift that $50,000 into this donor advised fund. And the year that you gifted, you would uh, receive that tax deduction. However, now it gives you a little bit more control where maybe you don't want to give $50,000 all in one year to one charity. And instead you want to invest that and maybe grow that $50,000 to $70,000 or $80,000. Well, with a donor advised fund, you basically gift it to this fund. Okay, you get the tax deduction for doing so. Now it is irrevocable. You can't ever take that $50,000 out and use it for yourself because Again, you got that tax deduction, but now you can grow that money and you can distribute it to different charities. Okay. So again, just something that offers you a little bit more control if you want. Um, another big one that kind of ties into the uh, Wealth Wednesday we did a few weeks ago now is gifting away RMDs. So at the bottom here, this is a situation that we showed um, on that RMD presentation. And so this person was in a situation where they would get a 35 or their RMD was estimated to be $35,000. Now they would owe tax on that RMD, but that RMD would also cause them to owe more tax on their social security benefits. So they would almost be double taxed in a way. And so in total, the total amount of tax because they're being double taxed would be $11,600, which is a 33% tax on that RMD. Okay, so their option was uh, one of two. Okay, obviously they didn't need the RMD, so that $35,000 was just uh, essentially excess money they would lose taxes on. So they could either take that $35,000, end up only retaining 23,000 of it because of all the taxes, or 
with something called a QCD or a qualified charitable distribution, they can just gift that RMD straight to a charity. Okay, you can do a QCD up to $100,000 of RMDs. Uh, you must be 70 and a half to do it. Okay, and now that's gonna update to, to 72 because again, it needs to be an RMD for you to do so. Uh, but the important thing is it doesn't require itemization. So it basically skips once again, that, uh, that standard deduction and go straight to the charity. So this person had the uh, option of either gifting $35,000 to a charity or taking it as income and spending 23,000 or gifting 23,000 then. So once again, QCDs can be a great way to deal with RMDs if you ultimately want to gift anyway. Okay. Um, now again, it last time we showed a bunch of ways to deal with RMDs. QCDs are just one of them. Okay. But once again, can be a great way to kick Uncle Sam out of uh, out of this gifting situation and just gift straight to the charity on money that you don't necessarily need anyway. Uh, the other thing that's important is making sure that you donate the right accounts after death. Okay. So we have somebody with uh, $800,000 and they want to ultimately gift half to their heirs, uh, their children, their grandchildren, and half to charity. Okay. Now we have three accounts here. We have a tax deferred account that has four hundred thousand dollars in it and then we have a taxable account with 150 and a roth with two hundred fifty thousand dollars so between the uh, taxable account and the roth that adds up to 400 and the tax deferred adds up to 400 so which accounts should you give to the heirs and which should you give to the charity okay ultimately you want to gift the um the heirs your taxable and roth accounts with a Roth account, obviously everything's tax free. There's no uh, mandate that they need to take a certain amount out each year. With the taxable account, let's say that they have fifty thousand dollars worth of gains in, the, in that taxable account. So their cost basis is a hundred thousand. Okay. Well, by gifting that taxable account, you get a step up in basis. So your heirs would be would have a cost basis now of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So if they sell and uh, take that taxable account to let's say pay off a mortgage or something like that, they would owe no tax on it, okay? Versus if they gifted that tax deferred account to the heirs, because of the SECURE Act, there is something called uh, a 10 year rule. And basically it mandates just like an RMD that they have to use that money within 10 years. So uh, assuming that account doesn't grow at all, uh, they're gonna need to take out $40,000 a year that's gonna cause them to owe taxes on because once again, it's a tax deferred account. So really, if you're giving half to heirs and half to charity, giving the tax deferred account, your heirs aren't getting $400,000 because they have to pay taxes on it versus gifting the taxable and Roth account is something they're not gonna to have to pay taxes on. Uh, they would only have to pay taxes when the taxable account gains more. But again, just for this simple uh, scenario, they wouldn't have to pay any taxes. So you wanna gift this $400,000 to a charity instead. Okay, um, again, avoiding the tax system. <laughs> so um, number four, I'm probably gonna end up doing a full training on this at some point just on charitable trust because these can be highly complicated and highly customizable. Uh, usually they're set up with a lawyer just like most trust documents are. And there's two kind of charitable trusts that we're gonna talk about today. The first is a charitable remainder trust. I'm just gonna stay fairly high level once again, because it's so customizable. Um, basically, I would say these only make sense if you're going to have a, a very large sum of money that you want to contribute to a, a charity or if you have um, very, very highly appreciated stock. Basically, what this does is you set up this charitable remainder trust. Okay, This is basically set up uh, typically as an irrevocable trust. Okay, you make a contribution to this charitable remainder trust. Okay, and how charitable CRTs, charitable remainder trusts work, is you get a tax deduction on the contribution and then uh, interest earned in this uh, CRT is tax exempt. Okay, and how it works is basically you, uh, you or your beneficiaries, whether that be you and your spouse or potentially you and uh, uh, and your heirs, um, they basically get a income stream from this charitable remainder trust. Again, this is set out. Um, sometimes it can be a fixed amount. 
Sometimes it can be a percentage of the account. Okay, again, highly customizable. Well, the money that doesn't end up being used in this income stream basically then gets distributed to charities. Okay, so it's kind of like a uh, you put money into a trust, you get an annuity payment from that trust, and then whatever left over when that income stops or when you pass away, the remainder amount goes to charities. Okay, and again, because of that tax deduction and the tax exempt interest uh, for specific situations, typically when you have higher, uh, you're subject to higher tax rates. This can make a little bit of sense. The other one I want to, uh, oh yeah, actually, so. Two different types of uh, charitable remainder trusts. A CRUT would be a charitable remainder uni trust. Okay, those payments are fixed, uh, a fixed percentage amount. So that basically assures that that account is never going to run out. And then a CRAT is, pay, uh, is a fixed dollar amount. Okay, and again, both are subject to different rules. I don't want to get too into the weeds. I'm guessing it doesn't apply to, this isn't a strategy that applies to most people in this group, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about it. We might do a training on it sometime in the future. The opposite is basically taking that uh, CRT and flipping it on its head. Okay, so this would be called a charitable lead trust. Okay, and so how this works is you gift assets into this CLT and then the, the annuity, if you will, goes to the charity, and then the remainder at the end goes to heirs. And with or with a fixed dollar amount. Okay. Um, basically, in summary, just wrapping this up is the most important thing with charitable giving is to know your goals and have a plan. Okay, how much do you want to give? Do you want to give at the end of your life, at the end of your plan, or do you want to give periodically throughout your life? And, and again, based on those goals, we can maximize the amount that's given. Okay, oftentimes I will say it's best to gift while you're alive. However, that creates a bit of a tug of war where you know every dollar that you give, depending on how strong your retirement plan is, is a dollar that you can't have as a safety buffer in case you have expenses down the road, in case the economic climate isn't as great versus um, if you give at the end of your life, obviously you're giving money that's just left over that you're never going to use. Okay. Um, and so again, just know your goals, have a plan in place. And it's something that I don't think most advisors talk with their clients about, but as you can see in this presentation, based on when you give and how you give, it can make a huge impact. So make sure you're incorporating that plan with your retirement advisor. Um, again, kind of touch on it, give it the optimal time. It's important to make sure you have a forward looking tax plan to know when the optimal time is. Okay. And then if anybody has additional questions, I haven't seen any in here, um, besides from some of those technical issues that we were having, but go ahead and comment below and either Tony or I would be happy to answer any questions you have, or if it's something where you're trying to develop more of a charitable strategy. Um, again, if you're a client, we've probably already talked about that. If not, um, that's something that you can, uh, if you're not a client, I should say, and that's something that you want to talk about, how can you give best? Again, just comment below and uh, either Tony, I, or Connie will reach out to you. So hopefully this was informative. Again, I think charity is, uh, is so important to incorporate into your retirement plan. Again, it's something a lot of people want to incorporate in because we're the Midwest and, and we end up giving quite a bit. So um, always remember, you don't need more money. You need a better plan. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a great rest of the day.